All right, it's uh, Monday, and uh, I'm uh, going to start a new project, kind of. It's, well, I'll explain it in just a second. Time to play with some clay. Now, I did this piece back in July of this last summer, and it was of Jim Bridger, and I redid Jim Bridger bigger, but I loved the horse on this uh, clay, and so I'm going to repurpose this clay, and uh, I'll show you what I'm thinking of doing. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is D construct this clay I don't see any reason to completely take him off because I've already got the uh, figure worked out and uh, so I'm going to keep the clay on there but I'm going to do a few changes as far as the saddle goes and things like that. It doesn't bother me to take it apart. It just uh, needs to be done. My uh, vision is in the works right now. I'm thinking of having a uh, Comanche warrior. And I'm thinking of titling it Comanche Moon or summer wind. I don't know yet. I'm just uh, trying to figure it out. Comanche Moon would be a, a good title. Um, in the summertime, the uh, Comanches could all be, always be relied on raiding uh, settlements and uh, settlers when the moon was full. That's why they called it the Comanche Moon. And uh, the Comanches, they were probably the most dangerous tribe on the, on the prairies. They literally halted the western, western, worth, yeah, can't talk, the western, westward movement of uh, Americans back in the early 1800s because of their prowess on horseback. By the age of three years old, a Comanche boy was considered a master of riding a horse. That's how good they were. Um, when they came up against... Uh, American troops or, you know, uh, cavalry and stuff like that, or in the case of Texas, the uh, Texas Rangers, um, they 
were, well, they, they would literally wipe out a whole troop of Texas Rangers with no sweat at all. And that's because the Texas Rangers didn't have good firepower. They uh, had muzzle-loaded rifles and, and uh, handguns with a single shot on both. And the Indians used bows and arrows with great uh, skill. And uh, the uh, Texas Rangers were at a de definite disadvantage uh, using the weapons they had. And uh, same with the cavalry and all that stuff. The cavalry, the United States Army was very slow in accepting multiple shot rifles or e uh, not multiple shot but rifles that could be loaded easily by putting a, uh, a shell into the chamber uh, they were slow getting to that and because of that it cost a lot of lives of uh, soldiers on the prairie So, people like Winchester came out with a six-shot handgun, and the U.S. military would not supply their soldiers with that for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. Maybe somebody was getting paid off in Washington. But anyway, they would not uh, supply the soldiers with uh, that wonderful weapon uh, for years. And uh, what I'm thinking of is doing a warrior. They uh, would carry a battle staff or a flag, uh, uh, the chief's flag, which would be a staff with feathers running up completely up and down the uh, staff. And uh, I want to make it a dramatic piece, but... Uh, Cost is another thing. So anyway, it's just a matter of getting it to a point where I can do something with the figure. So I don't know if I'm going to do Comanche yet. I just haven't made my mind up. I'm just playing it by ear right now. And, uh, make those decisions at some point but not at the moment I'm just using this uh, stick here as a uh, stand-in for what the staff will be I'm not sure how I'm going to position it yet but I just want to try out some positions here. Now the one thing that I'm worried about doing something like this is a piece of bronze that's thin with even with feathers on it will have a tendency to be bent as people touch it and it gets banged around or whatever and uh, that kind of worries me. I've been uh, listening to an audio version of uh, Empire of the Summer Moon, and uh, it's a it's a great book on the Comanche Indians and uh, about the Texas Rangers and a bunch of stuff that. Uh, well, if you if you ever followed the uh, Lonesome Dove series, and especially the ones where it followed the two main characters from their beginnings in the early 1800s uh, when they were out uh, I think surveying or they were just starting out as Texas Rangers I'm not sure if that's the case it's been a while since I've seen the uh, series but a lot of what is in those that series is in this book and it's incredible the amount of research this gentleman did and uh, the eyewitness accounts that he talks about or talks of and it's a, it was a real tough time 
to be a Easterner out west in the uh, early part of the western history of this country. The uh, Comanche were just well, they were defending their land, is basically is what they were doing. I kind of like that positioning there. I could also make it a feathered flag in that position. That's really a nice design right there, and it works well from every angle. Yeah, I'm going to put a blanket on the... Uh, the horse. He's not going to be riding on a saddle. He's just going to be riding on a blanket. Oops. <laughs> the Comanche were very adept with their bows and arrows and uh, with spears. They were definitely raised to be warriors. All right, that's a start. We'll see what we get to next time. Good night, everybody. See you next time. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. It really would help me. Also, check out the link below this video. It will take you to a review of my nine instructional videos that could be very helpful to you if you're thinking of sculpting. Good night, everybody.